Hey everybody, Brandon here from CAD Intentions. And in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at viewports in AutoCAD. I'm gonna explain how they work, the differences between layout and model space, as well as how to create viewports quickly and easily in AutoCAD, along with some tips along the way. I think you guys are gonna get a lot out of this one, so stick around. Let's jump right in. All right, so first up, the difference between a layout and a model space is gonna come in handy. Uh, you can see here in AutoCAD, we are in the layout or paper space portion of the program, and that would be the tabs down here that control that. Layout uh, is one of the default ones, and model is the default for our design space. So in model space, that's where you're gonna be doing all of your drawing and design work. And in layout space or paper space, that's where we're going to be creating our sheets and our drawings. Now a viewport is a very specific object, typically a rectangle, but it can be any shape basically, as long as it's a closed polygon. And that is going to exist in our layout space, and it is basically a window into the model or design space. You can think of it as a picture frame. That rectangle or viewport is going to allow us to see what's inside the model space. Now, the scale and zoom of your viewport is going to change the scale and how much or how little of a drawing or image or design you can see based on the scale. As you may already know, the viewport this rectangle here can be set to any number of scales to view a different area or size of your model space. So the smaller the scale, say 1 8 inch uh, to a foot, or say 1 to 50 if you're in metric or uh, standard scales, is going to be a small scale which would be quite zoomed in. Now, if you zoom out to say 1 to 1000, that's going to be a more zoomed out or overall view of your project or design. Depending on the type of work you're doing, the scales you use are going to vary quite a bit. And things like architectural and civil drawings are gonna use a larger or more zoomed out view for most things like site plans and floor plans, whereas smaller mechanical designs are gonna use a smaller view or a more zoomed in scale. Hopefully that makes sense, and we'll touch on scales again a little bit later. But now back to the viewport. So like I said, a viewport is basically a picture frame or window looking into your model space. Now you can create multiple viewports in a layout if you want to show different scales and views of your project, and I'm going to show you how to add those right now. Now when you're in the layout tab here, you can click the layout tab up above on the ribbon aptly named because we're working in a layout space. Now from here you can create new viewports uh, as simply as clicking this rectangular button here that's going to create a rectangular viewpoint. You can hit the drop down to create different shaped viewports but for now we're going to stick to rectangular. I've also got videos on all of these topics that dive a little deeper into each portion that we're talking about and I'm going to list those in the description down below for you to check out once you're done today's video. So back to clicking on rectangular, it's going to allow us to specify the corner. So we're just going to create another viewport over here and we'll just end it somewhere around there. So you can see it's shown the entire model space. We're just going to zoom into the portion that we are interested in. Say we want this one here to be a zoom in of our kitchen area. You can set it to a specific scale by clicking this little arrow here and displaying all of these scales you've got in your drawing. Now this upper one is at 1 8 equals uh, 1 foot I believe. So we're going to zoom this one here in a little bit and let's say we go up to 3 8 equals 1 foot. You can see that's a little bit too zoomed in so let's go to 1 quarter. So double clicking inside our viewport allows us to move it around by holding in the right or the center mouse click button or the mouse wheel you can click that into pan or you can type pan into the command line to move your drawing around once we've centered it in kind of the position we'd like you can simply double click outside of the viewport and double click inside to activate it outside to deactivate it. You can also simply just click the model or paper space tab here and that'll activate or deactivate your viewport. So now you can see we've got another viewport set. 
and it's showing the same objects just at a different scale and extent than the other viewport. This comes in handy for drawings where you'd like to show close-ups and zoom-ins as well as an overall picture of your design. Or if you've just got different designs in your model space and you'd like to show them around your drawing, say a front side and back view of a uh, part, you can set up a new viewport for each view, allowing you to keep them separate and label them and all of that. Uh, this makes it a lot easier to set up a more complicated sheet in your drawing and layout space here. So this kind of brings me back to an earlier video I did last year, and I'll put a link to that one as well. But scaling in AutoCAD is a popular topic, and we're not going to dive into that one today since this one is just about how to create and what a viewport is. But you should always be drawing at one to one or actual size in model space in AutoCAD. That means if something is one inch in real life, it will be one inch in model space. This applies as well for very large objects. I work in civil design and in a lot of times uh, highways, and these can be hundreds, thousands of kilometers or miles long, and you're going to draw all of that at full scale in your drawing. You can simply zoom out as much as needed to the millions of units, and you're never going to run out of space. Now your drawing may slow down if you've got large scale projects and in those cases we'll break them up into sections to keep the drawing size small, but we're never going to scale our objects in AutoCAD to anything other than one to one unless there's an actual good reason for it or you're drawing a say not to scale detail or example schematic. Um, everything else is going to be done at one to one or true size and you're going to choose your scale and sheet sizes based on your viewports and layouts. Now before we finish up talking about viewports, one important note about viewports is that they can be locked and unlocked by simply selecting one and clicking on the lock icon at the bottom right of the toolbar down here or right clicking and choosing display lock and just hitting yes. A locked viewport will no longer move when you double click inside it. It is locked in that view and at that scale. This prevents you from accidentally moving it if you are making changes through the viewport here because anything you change in say the viewport affects the rest of the drawing. You can see I just deleted that yellow hatch and it's disappeared in this view as well. It will have disappeared in model space. So again this is just a window looking into model space so changes you make are permanent and going to affect your design and model. Now there are workarounds and I've got videos on that including things like viewport specific colors, layers and settings so you can have some layers and colors display in one viewport that don't display in another viewport and those are all controlled through your layer property manager and then through these VP uh, properties. So VP means viewport so viewport line type viewport color, viewport line weight, all of these, including the viewport freeze, will only affect the viewport that you've got selected. So if you want to go into the viewport, as I have here, you can start changing viewport colors and viewport layer freezing options. And you can see here, if I select, say, everything with control A and viewport freeze it, everything's going to be frozen or not display in this viewport, but you can see down here, it's not affecting my other viewports. Now that's a drastic example, but you can go through and change individual colors, individual layers, line types, and align weights. And this is only going to affect this viewport if you've got it selected and you're only changing the VP columns of your layer manager. Now back to the locking of viewports. If you do decide you want to move or shift a viewport at a later time, simply selecting the viewport right clicking and turning that lock to no or clicking the locked icon down here. You can now move it around and change the scale freely. You're going to want to be careful with that since it's very easy to accidentally zoom it in or out or move it off the screen. So I would only unlock those for major changes. Typically once you've got all your viewports set, you're going to lock them and leave them just like that. Now there are a ton of other features in AutoCAD revolving around layouts and viewports including the ability to rotate, uh, spin, create multiple object sizes, 
uh, customizing your viewport settings and adding and removing custom scales and I touch on those in many other videos on the channel and if you'd like to learn a ton more about setting up drawings viewports design xrefs sheet sets and more don't forget to check out my course autocad fundamentals and workflows in a hurry i'll put a link to that up above and down below it's discounted using those links for viewers such as yourself if you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching don't forget to leave a comment down below letting me know what you'd like to see in the next video cheers